Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, we are talking about impulse and momentum and how these things uh, relate to each other. So let's just cover a, a couple topics very quickly. Impulse J is equal to the integral of F dt. Now in the case where F is a constant, it can come right out of the integral. And if you integrate dt, then you just get delta t. Okay, so impulse is related to force and how much time that uh, force is applied. But impulse j is also just delta p. Now, one good thing to remember in all this is these are really vector equations, right? Impulse has a direction, force has a direction. And so we should really be talking about the change in momentum as a vector. Delta P is just PF minus P initial, which in the case of a constant mass looks like MV final minus m v initial. So let's say we have the following problem. Let's say we have a force as a function of time that looks like this. It's zero and then it drops down to some negative value and then it goes back to zero. If this amount of time here is delta t and F is applied over that delta T, can we say something about the change in momentum on the particle? Well, yeah, if we look at this last equation here, we have impulse is equal to mv final minus mv initial, which if it's m constant, we can pull that out in front, factor it out. We already said it was constant, so we get mv final minus v initial. But all of that is equal to f delta t. So if that's our f and this is our delta t, then we can, for instance, calculate what the final velocity is. If I look at this last equation, I have m v final minus m v initial equals f delta t. So if you're trying to calculate v final, what do we do? We divide by m and then we add v initial to the other side and you can write this as v final equals f delta t over m plus v initial. And if you're given m and you're given f and delta t and you're given v initial, then you can calculate v final. If v final is a positive number, it's moving in the positive x direction. If it's a negative number, it's moving in the negative x direction. So let's just look at this answer for a second and make sure it makes sense. If there is no force applied, then there should be no change in the velocity. And that's indeed what happens, right? If F is zero, this whole thing drops out and we just get VF equals VI. Consequently, if you apply a force for a long period of time, there should be a large change in the velocity. And that's indeed what happens. This number would get very big. You would move that mass to a much higher velocity. If the mass was very big, then it's hard to get it to move. And so if m is very big, then this term out in front is very small and there is a small change in velocity. All right, so this should help you on your homework. Uh, if you have any questions, come see me in office hours. Good luck.